Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Today it's a watercolor, it's all about a rabbit. So let's roll that intro, let's see how we get on. Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, it is a watercolour, it's all about a rabbit. It's one that I'd photographed a few years ago on a trip down to Cornwall when I was painting in a place called Perth, Perth Kernick and I loved that beach and I walked up there at the up the cliffs at the end of the day and there he was sitting on the path in front of me. Enough time for me to get a couple of shots off when he saw me, he was gone. But he was great for a few seconds while he sat there in the lovely sunshine with the dappled light across its back and I felt that that would make a wonderful picture. The reason I chose it for you today is I wanted to show you uh, the well-known technique obviously of layering and how you can create a wonderful picture using layering in watercolour. But more than that, I wanted to show you how you can use vibrant expressive brush marks and the white paper to bring forward a really refreshing painting. That's what I wanted to try and do using layering using the white paper to create the wonderful light that you see within watercolour with complementaries, contrasts, lights and darks, all of those things. So before we head along into that, let me just say a big, big thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you all for the support that you give the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you a thing to do it, but at the same time, you do help my channel grow and reach a much greater audience. And that would be so much appreciated. And when you get to the end of the video, and I hope you do, then if you've enjoyed the content, then give it a thumbs up. That also helps me grow the channel and it is so much more appreciated. And if you've got comments to talk about, something to say to add to the comment or add to the video, then please put the comments in. I read them, I enjoy them, and I look forward to replying to each and every one of them. And if you want even more than that, don't forget there is a very, very lively growing Patreon of mine. I created Patreon uh, about a year or so back and it's been growing quite steadily. There is an awful lot of content on there, lots of films for you to enjoy, learn from, get something from to move on with. There is also a very, very active Patreon community on my Facebook pages where all my patrons can interact with each other and interact with me directly, show their work, talk about things, aspects, ask questions, get answers and get a lot of help. On top of that, every Friday there is a live stream just for my patrons every Friday night, 7 p.m. British time. Uh, you'd be more than welcome. If you take a look at the tiers, there are only five or ten dollars to get involved knowing that each and every penny that you put in goes to help me support all the efforts I put in to create content week in, week out for you to enjoy. So take a look. If you want to climb on board, get involved. You'll be so welcome. It'd be great to have you there. And I look forward to welcoming some of you who are watching this and have a look at it. Anyway, with that all said, let's talk about painting a rabbit. Let's talk about layering. Let's talk about expressive brush marks. Enjoy. Take care. Catch you all soon in the next video, every Friday, three o'clock. Don't forget. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody. A rabbit, a spring. I wanted to get this one out ready for Easter. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Uh, it's a little while after. We're not too bad on that. Now, the drawing's already been done. And the reason was it took such a long time to do the sketch and the drawing for it that I didn't want to take so much longer in this video. So all I'm doing now is taking off the excess um, carbon from the pencil so that it doesn't contaminate any of the paper or any of the paint moving forward. I just wanted to get most of that off, enough to see the drawing, but at the same time, I'm not going to sort of be spreading uh, dark colors over the white paper. This whole painting is going to be all about layering. Now, I want to preserve as much white paper as I possibly can moving forward. And I want to make my brush marks fairly energetic. There's a liveliness in the grasses that were on this day. And at the same time, the rabbit is just the warmer colors within the cooler grasses. And if it's all green and yellow, then it really doesn't make for a great picture.
I'm doing the same thing here. I'm using shapes within the rabbit to put in the first layer. Warm colors, lovely peachy oranges, transparent pyrrole oranges going in with a little bit of the siennas and other colors. You can see from the palette where they're being taken from. And also some of those blue violets, some of the uh, cobalt, a bit of ultramarine violet to give the shady side of the rabbit and the area within the ear and I want that to be really light and the thing is that if I go too dark too soon then I'm going to lose that in fact I felt that was a little bit too dark so I just used a bit of towel just to suggest uh, the light by taking a bit of the pigment off so I kept on waiting it's the Now I'm starting to put some of the warmer darks in. I've got the lovely cool shadows. They're contrasting beautifully with the oranges and some of the yellow ochres on the back of the rabbit. And I think those transitions between the cool and the warm are fantastic. They blend and they just already you can see the form of the rabbit. And the head is somewhat warmer and a little darker, of course. And we need to start looking at those values. But... Don't forget, it will always dry lighter. But you can see now that the rabbit has now gaining its second layer. The It does look as though I'm going completely over the former layer. I'm not. I'm allowing some of that to pump through. But I wanted to drop in some other colors while that's wet. Or not totally wet, but damp. So you'll see me do that now. The brush has got some extra darker colors in it. But the color underneath is darker. But it is damp. I'm putting on a nice set of warm colors now just to reinforce that light. But here we go again. I'm tapping some off so that I get a darker stain, but I don't obliterate all the light. And that really is quite key. It's quite important.
Now I'm changing my brush uh, to a finer brush and I'm coming in with some warm color now and sort of reds, bit of orange and I want to make that inner ear, that area where the sort of lights passing through the, the uh, skin, uh, very thinnest part of the ear, there's a lot of blood there, it looks very very warm and so the ear just just glows and that's what I wanted to try and recreate. The whole of this painting is about the yin yang of contrast, the lights, the darks, the warms and the cools and I, it's something that I look for in all my subject matter. much but hopefully this will start suggesting that extra vivid light and dark on the day that lovely um, sort of summer heat sunshine dappled light with trees and grasses on the trail um, as I was walking back up and, and it was it was so stunning the whole of that area in in Porth uh, Koenig is is absolutely stunning. The beach is beautiful, and um, I enjoy painting it and looking back towards Porthscatho. And um, yeah, I mean it, it's beautiful. Anyway, I digress. I'm going off topic. <laughs> we should be painting rabbits now. Coming with a little bit darker mix here, and a little bit of violet colours just into the greens, just to give it that bit of deeper accent and value right down there where the grasses are deeper and darkest around towards the back of the, the bunny. But you can see what I've been doing with the grasses. I'm leaving large swathes of areas that are the beautiful light contrasts of the grass running through the scene. Lovely dark shadowy grasses in front of the rabbit because obviously in front of the rabbit is going to be that much more in shadow. And so to that end we are making that happen. But I'm putting a few grasses now coming up to the back of the bunny so that it, it looks as though it's sitting in grass and not on top of grass. A lot of people I see put uh, an image of something like that and they don't consider the fact that the foreground uh, will come over and encroach over the subject matter.
coming in with quite a bit of dark now around the cheeks of the rabbit and um, it reinforces the light around the eye now the eye is going to get very dark in a moment but there is a subtle amount of light fur immediately around the eye and I'm painting um, I'm painting negative space into that area both with the eye and the fur blown and around it so that I leave that little bit of light transition And it also, these darks that I'm putting in now, they absolutely make the lights ping. Uh, you know, you put a dark... I've always said to everybody that if you want something to look uh, lighter, then make everything around it darker. And conversely, the other way, if you want something to appear darker, make everything around it lighter. Look how dark those shadowy grasses are near where my brush is now against that light the contrast is extreme but the grasses look almost solid dark and the lights look so light and looking at the rabbit look at that height that bottom area which is dark all those light grasses even the darker greens still appear quite light compared to that darkness around the rump and I'm just bleeding, bleeding some of that out now with a bit of damp brush, moving it around a bit. It's a little bit hard, and I just wanted to lose some of that. Now I'm coming back into the eye. I'm putting yet another dark layer in. I'm going to be using a much finer brush, some sepia, nice and brown, nice and hot going in and putting in a darker value once more into the eye. Uh, with some white body color very very shortly and to give some extra highlights to one or two places that got lost and while the I'm doing this the eye is drying the paint there is drying but it's not actually dry yet and I'm going to use some of this gouache just to give a little subtle sense of light glow through the eye itself
but these are now just little bits and pieces that I'm putting in just the final analysis the final assessment of this painting to make sure that I can't possibly do any more or literally I don't want to do so much that I consider it overworked to me at the moment this rabbit looks like a lovely bunny it's beautiful sunshine and it's not labored the grasses it all looks fresh now I'm signing it so I must be very very happy with it but remember what I said earlier I'd actually forgotten to paint the rabbit's nose so before I actually put the brush down for the final time there goes the nose it's just a little tap it didn't take much it was hardly noticeable but the painting's done I hope you've enjoyed it I've had a lot of fun and I do hope that you'll have a go at this yourselves and get something from it the reference as always will be there for you to use Take care, have fun, catch you all soon. Bye-bye.